Hey guys, what's up? It is Ripe again, back with more Entitled People. If you enjoy these story compilations, please don't forget to tell me in the comments. And without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. And the first one is titled Entitled Lawyer Blocks Disabled Park. Boy oh boy, do I have a story for you guys. So this all started a week ago when a guy parked in the no parking zone marked between two disabled bays across the road from where I work. For those who don't know, this section is for disabled people to get their wheelchairs in and out from their van lifts and it is the space for the little ramp that goes up onto the pathway etc. Which is why it needs to be kept clear all the time. So I work in a tiny cafe section of a supermarket which has its busy times but also has its quiet times. That day was one of the latter, about 5-10 to 10 minutes after this man parked there, a customer parked in one of the disabled bays next to him and began to get their wheelchair out. Shake my head. As I had a quick second, I crossed the road to the man who was only a few meters away from the parking spaces, sitting at a restaurant, me, g'day mate, would you mind moving your car for me please? A customer is trying to get their wheelchair out and you have blocked them from using the access ramp to the footpath. Him, okay, gets up, me, thanks, gets back to work. He did not seem sorry or ashamed, but whatever. He seemed to have gotten the point. Back from my window though, I saw him watch the disabled user get their wheelchair out in spite of his car and didn't make any attempt to move it. Though I thought I had explained pretty clearly and respectfully without chastising him why it is not okay to park there. Though I thought the no parking lines would be a clear enough message. I just shook my head in disbelief at how this guy had no shame at all and was just taking the piss. I was too busy though, I nearly tried to find an opportunity to come back over and ask him what happened to moving your car. But by the time I had a second, he was gone. Oh also, the entire time he was watching, he was standing right next to about two or three free actual parking spaces. I definitely gave him too much credit to think that even if he had thought it was okay before. There's no excuse not to move now, since several spaces had now freed up. Fast forward a week, guys, and this is where we kick things up a notch. So just yesterday, I see this guy pull the same stunt again. Only this time, he parks his car, gets out, sees me see him, and shaking my head in disbelief again, and he gives a big cheeky wave. It is a super quiet day, so I go over there instantly and chat to him. You will have to excuse me for not remembering exactly how our conversation went line by line, because as you will see, how weird this interaction got, he was throwing me curveballs all over the place. Me, good day mate, so do you remember last week how I explained to you when you parked there it blocks my customers from being able to use their wheelchairs and access their ramp? Him, so... Me, yeah, you cannot park there, please mate. Him, who are your customers? Where do you work? Me, you know exactly where I work, you just waved at me. Him, trying super hard to scare me now, who's your manager? Stares hard at my name badge for about 30 seconds as we continue our conversation. His name is XX, you are more than welcome to chat to him, I don't really mind, but you cannot park there. Him, tell him to call me, I come here to get lunch and you're trying to be a hero, I will F you up. I genuinely found this hilarious as he was a good 15 cm or so shorter than me and didn't seem like he knew much about fighting. Not to mention, he was nowhere near level headed enough for a fight now. Me, standing my ground, why are you being rude mate? Him, I'm not being rude, that's a loading zone, people are allowed to park there. Me? No it's not. It's a no parking and you're not loading anything anyway. Whatever, I've got a job to get back to. Walks back across the road. So old mate decides to follow me into the supermarket and begins to call me a racist, he is Indian and that I'm just jealous because he was driving a Mercedes. I didn't even know or care, I genuinely thought it was a BMW. And that is why you work in a coffee shop. To which I said, feel better? Both he and I walk over to my colleague at the same time and ask my colleague to call XX, the store manager. 
My colleague realizes something serious is going on and promptly gets the manager and I walk back over to my little cafe section with my new friend back in tow. Still getting personal with the insults and I just stand there knowing it has nothing to do with me. Hand on heart, I swear, he even tried to play the race card again and said something about how I am just jealous because a black man's driving a Merc, which I thought was laughable. I thought Indians are brown. Did he just think it sounded cool to identify as black? I don't know, I digress once again. So I told him, loudly enough for nearby customers to hear and get their attention, not to keep threatening me. I also said, just be careful mate, there are cameras right here, which I pointed out, him, I don't care. Anyway, while he is now going full Karen on me, all of the managers finally come down basically all at once and he says to my store manager, I want to talk to you outside. Manager, yeah sure, it's a nice day, let's go outside. Not sure why, so I cannot hear? So he's not in others territory? In view of the cameras? From what I saw, this guy is still going at top speed at my manager and, as I pieced together later from what manager told me, my manager finally got a word in and said, Okay, may I speak now? Aaron is right. You cannot park there. Oh, by the way, I should mention, my manager has a disabled parking badge as his son is in a wheelchair and needs to make use of this exact type of parking. I'm honestly getting r slash that happened vibes just from typing this out, but I swear on my grave I'm not making up a single part of how this all unfolded. Upon realizing that my manager is on my side, this guy apparently used all the same insults and tactics he tried with me, calling the manager a racist, jealous, etc. He also threatened him. Manager is significantly taller than me and therefore way taller than that guy, so naturally my manager simply left, took a photo of his parking and walked back inside. The manager then comes over too and fist bumps me and tells me I did a good job. No, everybody did not clap, but once again, I swear I'm not embellishing any of this. Later on we learned that this guy tried to email the head office to once again tell the same lies to them about me, my manager and apparently, as I gave away in the title, he is a practicing solicitor. He then included his full name and phone number, which I don't have, but I do find it funny that he thought he was going to get far when I could easily have more dirt on him than he could have on me. We have joked about messaging his work, for example, to tell them of his behavior. I feel very lucky to have a manager who is perfectly professional and still has no problem standing up for both myself and his employees and I've actually got a couple more stories like this if enough people are interested but I don't feel much need to post them unless they entertain you guys enough, so let us know. And ripe stars by the way, excuse me if the audio quality is a little bit different than usual today because I am once again at my girlfriend's parents' house for a couple of days before we move to Bangkok, so obviously the audio setup here is a little bit different. Anyway, if you have watched until here and enjoy my content, please don't forget to like the video and post some star emojis in the comments. Thank you so much in advance. And the next one is titled, Karen attacks me on the bus for my disability seat. Here is a bit of background before I tell you the incident. I am a 23 year old male and for the last 12 months I've been suffering from chronic leg pain and depression slash anxiety. The leg pain is caused by varicose veins in my left leg and damaged muscle and extreme eczema related to the varicose veins. The pain is one of the worst pains I have ever felt and for the last 12 months I've had pain from the moment I wake up to the moment I sleep. It wakes me up and I'm lucky to get more than 3-4 to four hours sleep a night. I have very limited motion in my leg and need a walking stick to get around. To tackle the pain I am taking a lot of medicine that Ripe cannot pronounce, even with all this the pain is still there and this just takes the edge off it. I'm currently waiting for an operation to fix it. Due to this condition I've been isolated since January and basically stay in bed all the time. I only leave my house to go to the doctors, hospital or my local shops which is 5 minutes away from my house. This walk takes me about 10 plus minutes as I need to take breaks. Now you have an idea of my background and I will get to the Karen incident. 
I was sitting on the bus on my way home from the hospital, the bus which was almost at capacity due to the virus regulations, meaning every other chair was out of use. I was sat at the front in one of the seats reserved for people with disabilities when Karen got on the bus. Karen came up to me and said, Excuse me, but you've got to move and stand because I need to sit down as I've been shopping all day and my legs are tired. I looked at her and held my walking stick up and said, I'm sorry, but I cannot move. I need this seat as I cannot stand for long and I won't be able to keep my balance when the bus is moving as I have a problem with my leg. I'm sorry, I think there might be some seats at the back. Karen looked at me and... No you don't, don't lie to me, you're too young to be like that, you're just doing it because you're too lazy to stand, get up now or I will make you. I just froze up and didn't know what to say and then she grabbed my arm and started pulling me off the seat. Get off now, stop being a lazy kid, you kid these days have no respect. She pulled more and I fell off the chair to the floor, hitting my head on the pole where the button is and busted my lip open. The bus driver came over and helped me up and asked if I was okay. I just sat there, I couldn't speak, I was shaking and started hyperventilating. I was frozen, I didn't know how to react, I didn't know what was going on around me and was having a panic attack. One of the passengers came over and tried helping me calm down while the driver kicked off the Karen. I don't really remember this part and what was said apart from the passenger and driver helping calm me. Once I calmed and stopped crying and hyperventilating, the driver asked if he could do anything and if I was okay. He gave me a bottle of water and him and the passenger reassured me that I will be okay and they kicked Karen off. They gave me a tissue to clean the blood off and the bus went off. I was still in shock and shaking, I didn't even look back to see if Karen was at the bus stop. Once we got to my stop I got off and went home and locked myself up in my room. Since then I've not been able to leave my room when my housemates are in the shared areas without having a panic attack. I cannot be in the same room as people or go shopping. I have to get a taxi now to go to my hospital appointments and even then I feel extremely uncomfortable and avoid speaking with the driver. This experience made me realize how vulnerable I am and I cannot go out anymore as I fear for my safety. If something happens I cannot run away or defend myself and it scares me so much even talking about this incident to my family or my therapist causes me to have a panic attack. This experience has broken me completely and ruined my ability to leave my house. I don't know how to overcome this. And the last one is titled Park in the Handicap Parking Space? Here I was, thinking that I had ran out of entitled people's stories that don't involve my mother, but I am back with yet another one. This happened a few days ago, I am recovering from abdominal surgery 12 days prior to when this happened. I was finally feeling up for shopping and there were things I needed from the hardware store. I am a 30 year old disabled female in a wheelchair, incomplete quadriplegic and I don't have a car so I got a taxi there, one with a ramp on the back so I don't have to get out of my wheelchair. Mr. Taximan, who we will call Bruce, dropped me off and I went in to do my thing, nothing out of the ordinary. When I finished my shopping I called to get the taxi back, it would be a 15 minute wait but it was such a nice day that I didn't mind waiting outside. As I was waiting I noticed that someone was parked in the disabled parking space but there was no disabled tax on the windscreen. Annoying but I honestly didn't care at that point, I just wanted to get home. About 10 minutes later I saw a middle aged woman walk out of the store and went straight to that car. She opened the boot, put her shopping in and went around to the driver's side but instead of getting in though she got out a cigarette and started looking at her phone. A few minutes after that I saw my taxi arrive. Bruce, being the polite and patient man he is, waited for the woman to drive out of the car space. Karen knew he was waiting for her and she was damn sure she was parking illegally in the disabled parking space. But do you think she cared? She finished her cigarette and got into the car. We waited and waited and then waited some more until Bruce got rightly fed up and parked the taxi directly behind Karen's car, blocking her in. This is when things got interesting. Karen began to honk her horn repetitively for a few seconds before she got out of her car. Karen, what the bloody heck do you think you're doing? You blocked me in. Bruce, in a mocking apologetic tone, 
I'm very sorry ma'am, but I needed the car space. And you seem to want to stay there. Just thought I would do you a favor. Now if you don't mind, I have a job to do. Bruce gestured in my direction as I gave Karen a big smile. I hate confrontation, so I appreciated Bruce doing it for me. Bruce got into the car and fastened me and my wheelchair into place, all the while with Karen yelling profanities and threatening to call the police. If it were any other day, I would have been happy to call the police so Karen would get a fine, but I just wanted to go home. It only took a few minutes before I was secured in the car and we left, but I made sure to give Karen a smile and a one finger salute through the window as we were leaving, which made the encounter all the more sweeter. And you know guys, I gotta say, speaking of wheelchairs, Thailand for the most part, I'm sure it is not the same in every single city, but at least every city I've been in so far, is extremely unfriendly to wheelchair users. I mean sure, if you go to the big malls you can expect a certain level of accessibility, but the real problem are the sidewalks. For the most part either they are way too small, they are broken, or it is basically impossible to get on them with a wheelchair. Interestingly enough, for the most part, it is really easy to get on them with a motorcycle, which is what many people do. Obviously, to skip traffic. So I gotta say, if I would be in a wheelchair, I would definitely not be living in Thailand. And the next one is titled, Another Karen Assumes Young People Cannot Be Disabled. So, context, I am 20 years old, typical blonde hair, blue eyes, relatively innocent looking girl. I am also disabled, I have a condition which no doctors can diagnose, but basically my ribs or the cartilage surrounding them have become really inflamed and excruciatingly painful. It gets to the point that several times a week, sometimes several times a day, my ribs are sending so many pain signals to my brain that it stops telling my lungs to breathe. It is a relatively logical thought process, breathing equals pain, pain equals bad. So let's just not breathe then. But as you can imagine, it causes a lot of issues. Despite not being able to turn at my waist or bending down to pick something up without crying out in pain, I now have to focus on breathing to make sure that I don't accidentally suffocate myself. Now the bit you all want to hear. I live in the UK and my main mode of transport is the bus. This is mainly because they have great seating for disabled people and it means that I don't need to walk far in my condition. So I'm having a flare up and not able to breathe without specifically thinking to push my lungs in and out. It is also extremely painful, imagine wearing a corset with metal pipes sticking into your body and every breath you take in, the pipes stick deeper into your flesh. You're pretty much there. I somehow managed to get on board, show the bus driver my return ticket and practically fall onto the disabled chairs at the front of the bus. Now in the UK these chairs are called priority seats and you have to give them to disabled, elderly or pregnant people. It is a great system. By the way guys, just to quickly chime in, does a similar system exist in public transport in the US? If you know, please tell us in the comments. Enter Karen. She strolls onto the bus, bleached hair mess from the wind and coat looking rather disheveled. She does not even look at the bus driver as she hands her ticket over, her glare resting on me the entire time. To save time, OP is me, K is the Karen and NL is the nice lady who comes to my aid. Karen, could I have that seat please? OP, barely able to breathe, let alone speak loudly. <sighs> Sorry, I need it. I'm... Karen. It's a priority seat. You're supposed to give it to people more in need than yourself. But I, I am in need. There are plenty of other seats. Please. You are not in need. You clearly are not pregnant and you're certainly not old. OP. No, but I am disabled. Karen rolls her eyes. Of course you are. I know you young people like to identify with things nowadays. But you cannot just say that you're disabled. OP. But I am. Karen. Can I see a blue badge then please? A sign you put in your car which allows you to park in disabled base and on double yellow lines. OP, I don't drive, so I did not ask for one. Karen, well, isn't that convenient? Karen then proceeds to attempt to pull me off the chair. I block one of her arms. My boyfriend is a black belt and has taught me some self-defense for situations just like this. It happens surprisingly often. But miss her other arm that grabs my shirt around my waist and pulls. Her fist collides with my ribs and I scream. It hurts so freaking much that I am now crying and curled up in agony. 
NL, Jesus Christ, you moron! Karen looks smug as she thinks the lady is siding with her. NL, are you okay? Do I need to call an ambulance or the police? Karen now looks confused. OP between sobs, I just want to get home. I am now close to having a panic attack, unsurprisingly my own body failing me countless times has led to some pretty bad anxiety and I wanted to get back to my support dog who had to stay at home while I was at uni because the UK still don't see mental health as real health. And yes, I pronounce uni like that. Karen, well that was your own fault, can I have the seat now? NL, sit down and shut up before I ask you to be escorted from the bus. The bus driver is now looking up, wondering what the raised voices are about. Karen, but she's lying, she's not disabled. NL, look at her, she's clearly disabled. Sit down before you embarrass yourself anymore. Karen, but she's too young to be disabled, she cannot be disabled. Karen now looks slightly panicked as she realizes that the entire bus is tutting her. OP, my stop is coming up. It wasn't, but I was too anxious to stay in that environment. NL, okay sweetie, we will get you to your stop. Nice lady then glares at Karen and points to a chair. I swear, if I had not been in so much pain, I would have been laughing so hard. Karen, now rather resembling a beetroot. Well, she didn't need to make so much of a fuss. NL, you practically attacked her. As in pain and anxious as I was, I did think that this was a bit of an exaggeration. You're lucky she doesn't want to sue you for harassment or something, or physical abuse. I wish I could sue you for sheer ignorance. Karen starts to open her mouth, but at this point the bus driver is about to get out of his chair to sort the situation out and Karen's skinny little bottom meets a chair before you can say, Entitled people. Nice lady then persuades me to stay until my actual stop and chats to me on my way home. Me still crying and just trying to breathe but smiling along to her stories. When I get home I lie straight on the floor and give my dog so many cuddles while he gives me DPT. And guys unfortunately we have already reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories and if you haven't already please also go to patreon.com slash ripe youtube where I upload exclusive reddit videos starting at just three dollars a month. This is a great way to support me in case you are interested and the chance for me to become independent from youtube revenue. Thank you so much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I hope to see you again tomorrow.